glad you're on with us because you could tell us all about what's been going on in the world of metals. We can't deny if someone puts in TMC and they want to check out your company, they're going to see a lot of volatility, heavy trading, um, even on one day where the stock was up 24%. What do you say to that? Well, it's a new story and it's a disruptive story. And, you know, we're excited to be on the public markets and uh, we rang the bell at NASDAQ today, but we listed last uh, Friday. Uh, and yeah, so it's, it's, I guess investors are starting to look at this stock. They've, they've noted that we have, um, you know, low free float out there in the market. And I think investors are, are getting behind A, the story, and also a market trade. All right. Well, uh, we'll move on from that because I know that it's uh, I, I read one thing that said there was a total of 224 million shares outstanding. Only 2.7 million shares are publicly traded currently. Did you want to comment on that or should we move on to some of the news on the company? Well, you know, it is true that we have a, a, a small free float. And it's also true that we have a lot of strategic shareholders uh, who are part of the company and their companies who like the names like Musk and Allseas and the founders who right. control a lot of the stock. And this is a story that's evolving and we think it's just the beginning. So I guess the, I imagine the float will stay pretty tight going forward. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. So let's get to some of the uh, hot topics, right? EV batteries, harvesting poly uh, metallic rocks are helping to create those batteries. Your group, is a part of this. Um, what does this mean? Yeah, well, the world has decided we're moving away from fossil fuels. And so everyone's decided electric cars and electrifying the transport fleet is, is an important part of addressing climate change. But now people are realizing that to enable that, we're going to have to increase extractive industries between five and 600% to meet the metal needs of the future. Now, the trouble is, the resources on land are challenging to find and come with a very heavy environmental cost. So at the metals company, we're focused on collecting polymetallic nodules, I'm holding one, and they literally lie on the ocean floor and they contain all of the battery metals we need to be able to build an electric vehicle battery. And, and we're able to collect them and process them into metals at a fraction of the environmental cost compared to land-based alternatives. And so I think we're moving into a period of se uh, severe shortages when it comes to battery metals like nickel and cobalt and copper. And luckily, they're found in abundance in, in these polymetallic nodules. That's amazing. And I like that you're holding one. Um, when you look at what's going on, the, the TMC clients that are buying these, um, obviously, the environment is always a concern. And Who's getting into this with you to move forward and see the growth? Well, we have uh, a number of strategic partners already. Uh, Glencore are one of our shareholders, and they also have an, have an offtake for half of the nickel and half of the copper in our first production area. But we also have uh, people out of the offshore oil and gas services industry, companies like Maersk, companies like Allseas, who are the world's biggest, or one of the world's biggest sure. pie players and are needing to transition into new industries, but they bring tremendous expertise. And so, you know, we've, we've uh, amassed a fabulous group of strategic supporters behind this project. And we're now very excited to come into the public markets because it's a story that's of international importance, particularly when it comes to addressing climate change. Yeah, it really certainly is. And as we are also seeing the demand, right? I mean, you were talking about nickel and um, some of the others, but I, you know, I watched aluminum at new highs. Everybody loves to yeah. talk about silver and gold and copper as we're mm. you know, having a reopening infrastructure story. Um, as you look at the individual metals, I'm sure you eat, sleep, and breathe these numbers. Mm -hmm. um, what are your yeah. thoughts for investors? Well, my thoughts are base metals are a pretty good place to be. Uh, in for the next coming decade because mm -hmm. there's no doubt about it that that battery metals in particular are going to be in short supply and energy independence is another theme that is stronger now than it's been ever and by that I mean the trade war between China 
and the USA and other nations. And, and what the world has woken up to is that China have done an outstanding job of investing ahead of the curve. So today, 60% of every ton of nickel that is mined ends up in China. 90% of every ton of cobalt that is mined ends up in China. And so if you want to go and build lots of gigafactories, which everyone's announcing they will do, then you've got to ask the question, where are the metals going to come from? And so it's very hard to find very large scale resource deposits that are undeveloped. And so yet, yet on our area, we've identified 1.6 billion tons of our polymetallic nodules. And that's enough to build around 280 million mid-sized EV batteries. And so it's a really significant wow. resource to help address those shortages that we see coming up.